Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Jodie here from Decorous Vintage Designs. Uh, firstly, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who has supported my channel so far. You guys are all amazing, I love you. Um, today, 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 we're going to be making over this armoire and I'm thinking, I haven't done anything pretty in a while, so I'm thinking maybe doing something pastel and pretty and boho for this one. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, so to get started with, I'm going to layer up some colours. So this is what I'm going to put on as my base. Um, I'm going to put on Dixie Belle Blue. Farmhouse Green. Wait, can I balance all of these? <laughs> we'll see. Um, ooh, Rebel Yellow. And can I put this one on top? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And also <laughs> some Flamingo. I knew that would happen. So it doesn't matter what brush you use for this part, I'm just going to use my synthetic ones today but honestly you can use whatever brush you want just for this base layering because it's just going to be, as it, the, you know, as I say, the base layer, so yeah. So I'm starting with the Dixie Belle Blue and I'm very, very roughly putting it on the top of the piece. I want some good coverage where I am actually applying the blue but I'm going to leave some gaps because I'm going to come in there a little bit later with another colour. And I am just basically, as a base layer for this, going to start with a very rustic ombre and I am not using any water either for this part. So where I left the gaps, I'm now coming in with my very lovely pastel Rebel Yellow and I'm very, again, roughly, roughly blending this into the Dixie Belle Blue. This is going to be perfect by no means. Also, all of the products I use today, as usual guys, are listed down below. If you're in the US, you can grab them through my links and that just helps me out and supports my channel a little bit. So what I'm doing here now is using the exact same brush that I used for the Dixie Belle Blue. I am putting a lot more of the yellow on my brush and I'm also bringing that downwards, um, further down into the wardrobe. This is what I mean by the Rustic Ombre. Again, I'm not using any water because I want it nice and thick. Um, I don't want to dilute it, I don't want to overblend it or anything like that I just want to get a decent base layer on there you might find sometimes that the colors blend into each other which is cool it's fine it will create a different sort of effect um, if you find that your brush is it's got too much excess on it then you can just wipe your brush off and then continue painting using the same brush I am brushing on some flamingo using the same process again you'll see here we've got big thick clumps of flamingo we've got some clumps of Dixie Belle Blue mixed with the yellow and some mixed and blended with the flamingo. So this is what I mean. This is going to be a rustic bohemian look. It's going to be very pastel and pretty and layered. So these different variations of colours are really, really what's going to make this piece. So I am bringing the flamingo right down to the top of the bottom drawer of this piece. And then I'm coming in with my farmhouse green and blending that into the flamingo. I am also going to paint a little bit of the flamingo like I did with the rebel yellow at the top. I'm going to roughly paint that into some of the farmhouse green as well, being sure not to perfectly blend. And then once this had dried, I got a brand new fresh brush. Again, it doesn't really matter what brush you use for this in all honesty. And I am very roughly painting some mint julep over the top um, of the farmhouse green and bringing it up just a tiny little bit into the flamingo as well. So what I'm really doing here is doing a bit of shading and when I'm shading I am not putting tons of paint on my brush, I'm building it up very very gradually and making sure that all of the excess is wiped off. Um, and it's nice to do contrasting colours as well, so the Mint Julep is a very contrasting colour to the coral which is the uh, flamingo and that can create some drama. So now I have peony and I'm going to just shade a little bit of the peony over the flamingo and that will add more depth because they are similar colours, they're from the similar colour groups and I'm also going to bring some of the peony up into where the blue is um, yeah so just 
building different colours up can create different effects. So here I am, I have Peacock and I am also applying that very roughly over the top of the Rebel Yellow and the Dixie Belle Blue. So don't panic if it looks a bit patchy for now, I will show you how it will be all be brought together at the end. So going back to what I just said about shading and not having tons of paint on your brush, hopefully you can see here that sometimes I'm barely putting any of the peacock on at all. I, it is just softly, softly, just sort of fanning my brush out and just wiping off any of the excess that's on my brush and that is called dry brushing. So I thought I'd show you a far away shot of how it's looking so far because I'm bringing that peacock right down into the rebel yellow. <laughs> Then I go back in, using the same brush for all of this again, I'm going back in with some flamingo and start applying more flamingo over the top of the peacock. The brilliant thing is about layering colours is that if, if you decide actually it needs a little bit more of this colour or it needs a little bit more of that colour, you're kind of not tied into it, you can fix any sort of mistakes that you make or you can just build and build and build until you're happy. And then on the bottom drawer here I go in with some mermaid tail which is my darker colour. So if you think peacock at the top was the dark blue to the lighter blue and then we've got the contrast in yellow and at the bottom here we've got the mint julep, the farmhouse green, um, the contrast in flamingo and then the darker colour which is the mermaid tail just to create a bit of a big net and a bit of depth and shadowing. Again with a tiny tiny amount on my brush I'm bringing some of that mermaid tail right up there and then once all this is dried I got some 180 grit sandpaper and I just took my time and decided to sand some of these colours back. So this will help some of my original base layers peek through and it will just help this piece to look very chippy and rustic and it also will soften the colours so it will help them look a little bit less patchy and bring them together a little bit. If you want a more rustic, scratchy, wooden type, you know, rustic wooden look, then you can go in with a higher, uh, sorry, a lower grit of sandpaper. So now I have Best Dang Waxing White and my Le Petit brush, which is my go-to waxing brush. And I'm going to use this to not only seal the piece, but also I'm going to apply it all over because white wax is amazing. Um, it's amazing for softening colours and for bringing colours together and just making them look even more soft and pastel-like. My white wax here had dried out a little bit, so it's taken a little bit more effort than what it should have done. I was having to really put some pressure on to smooth it out. It's usually a lot creamier. Um, but yeah, this will. This is just the stuff that really is perfect for layered looks because it really helps bring them together. So what I'm going to do now that the wardrobe has been finished, I thought it might be really nice to um, decoupage the side of the drawer. The drawer, and I thought it might be nice to have a little surprise as the customer opens it up and decoupage this um, native rose decoupage rice paper on there from Dixie Bell. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Before I applied my decoupage paper, I put on a base layer of fluff. If you have light decoupage paper, it's a really good idea to put on a white base layer because then it will help the colours look even more vibrant. Once that dried, I then went ahead and applied a layer of the flat clear coat. This will act as a glue and any and all of the Dixie Belle clear coats work perfectly with their decoupage paper in order to glue them. I then got my decoupage paper into position. Because this is going to be a rustic piece, I really didn't mind the crinkles. 
that's a whole look if that's not for you then what I'm going to do is drop a video down below from AJ's vintage designs that shows you how to get a smooth decoupage look and then um, these papers are really really tough so I went ahead and applied even more of the clear coat to make sure that is nice and sealed While my paper was still wet, I grabbed my sandpaper from earlier and I just very softly started to fray those edges with it. You can measure it out if that's your kind of thing, you know, beforehand and that's absolutely fine. I just prefer to get my decoupage paper on there and then use the sandpaper to remove the edges afterwards. And here's the finished look. Let me know guys, drop a comment and let me know whether or not you like this boho look. Is this lead kind of look for you? And as always, have a great time painting and take care. Bye bye.